I've been working on building my own major Bitcoin mining farm. And with that comes all kinds of craziness. Like we have been really focusing on a lot of immersion mining deployments. And with that provides a unique opportunity to try different minor firmware, which is, you know, software on the miner that will give us enhanced capabilities and a better usability when these miners are you know, submersed in liquid. It's pretty crazy stuff. So today we're going to be looking at the Bixbit firmware. I'm going to show you how to install it. I'm going to install it on my rig. We're going to look at some of the options, some of the performance here. And uh, then where this gets you more fun is I'm going to put this Bixbit miner into the Bixbit immersion pod. I'm also going to look at dual power supply options. Basically, you literally slap another power supply on a miner, and then that gives you an increased power uh, capability. So you could really crank up the juice and increase your hash rate, but it comes quite literally at an additional cost. So we're gonna run through all that more. My name is Vosk, and uh, I'm a crazy crypto guy. So we've been given the really cool, unique opportunity to review the Bixbit Immersion Container. And they sent us that to review, right? Full disclosure, everything. Always giving you guys the real deal here. We did not have to use their firmware uh, at any point. And uh, they actually sent us two kits. And the second kit was basically a gift. And they say, do whatever you want with it or do nothing with it. You know, no obligation strings attached. Uh, and that second one is going to be their three minor cell. This one's actually configured for only two miners. Uh, specifically, it's this 3S19 slash M50S uh, container. You don't have to do immersion or anything like that. That's just kind of what I'm here fixated on, right? Uh, the benefits of using immersion with mining, right, is 40% hash rate increase, they say. You can reuse the heat. Equipment lifespan is up a 200% apparently. Uh, you reduce the noise and the dust, uh, and you can reduce the power consumption here as well. Uh, so that's very interesting, but let's stay focused on the firmware because I'll have a full video outlining the install uh, and everything in between. Um, I think those are very interesting because they're very intricate. And to be frank, it's uh, doing these installs, you know, with my background, which is just DIY guy. Uh, it's intense. It's intense. I'm thankful for some of the incredible help we have uh, here on the mining farm front now. So ASIC custom firmware, right? Bixbit edition. They make this, they develop this. This is, you know, their firmware they make in house, not white labeled or something like that. They also have this thing called Bixbit AMS. It's like ASIC minor solution. Uh, I don't know, I forget what the AMS stands for, but it, it monitors your rigs, right? So we're on their firmware area. Uh, understand that this firmware is free, but there is an associated dev fee. So, you know, I'm losing 3% of my mining profits. 2.8 technically, right? Uh, it's going to them for developing this. So I'm gonna need to clear that to even just break even on using the firmware or it needs to be pretty beneficial that I would be willing to give that up for, you know, certain things. With that said, right, you can just click a category here. Bitmain, what's minor, what's minor, uh, two PS2, what's power? Naturally, I think most people will probably have an ant miner S19. Uh, otherwise, they'd have a what's minor. Uh, their firmware is actually, my understanding, more popular on the What's Miner series of miners. Uh, and it was very cool to see them release it for the L3 Plus. I would love, love to see more firmware support for altcoin miners. It's so underdone. Uh, by the way, if you need to grab one, huge shout out and plug for the channel sponsor. It's going to be ASIC Marketplace. They've got a bunch of different What's Miners, among many other miners, or all the different manufacturers are over there. And, uh, you know, on this, you can grab the exact miner I'm using here today, one of the M30 uh, series, you know, from the M30S plus, 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 different terahash second model, M31, right? These are in stock and you can get into the Bitcoin mining game and get over 100 terahash for around $1,500. All right, so I just remoted into my Windows PC, and that's a key thing to note. So we're gonna run through the install, right? Finally got this working a bit. Uh, actually, you know, actually, you know what? Hold on, story time. So right now I've been working through the install with my electrician uh, for the Bixbit immersion systems, and I mean this is expert level stuff. It, it's it's challenging, it's interesting, okay? And then at the same time, I'm juggling my concrete contractor. We didn't have water out there, so I've been filling 55 gallon water drums a day. And it's just been crazy. It's been all over the place. You can see my green screen is wigging out a little bit. Um, it's, just, it's just a day in the life. So let's get back to it though. 
we're going to run through the install. I remote it into my Windows PC. Why, right? Well, this software is Windows. All right, so you need a Windows capable PC to do all this. So you download this, right? Then you will unzip it. I just unzipped it to my desktop. You double click it, and then you've got the tool here. So at that point, you can punch in the IP address of uh, either your miner directly, or you can have it scan your network, right? Whatever you want to do. Uh, so I logged into my uh, router. I got the IP address. I'm just going to select the IP address that I know it is. Okay. Uh, so at that point, right, I, I've discovered the machine. So now we need the firmware. And so in order to get that right, we're on the firmware site, we download it. And in particular, right, I am either going to use, take off the double power supply that I have on the current rig uh, and run the M3X, or I can do the add PSU and it'll recognize and utilize that second PSU for more overclocking. So I'm messing around with this double PSU stuff. Uh, the process this is the same, like either way. So I downloaded this. Uh, and then at this point, right, I go to upgrade and I select the file and I grab that file. This is the exact file. Uh, in my case, I'm looking for that two PSU at the end. I select this and then I click start upgrade. Done. Simple as that works. What's really blowing my mind here though is going to be the claimed efficiency. So it's claiming 21 and a half watts terahash. And, it, and it's claiming it's only consuming about 2,100 watts. That, that is just absolutely wild efficiencies. All right, after doing some investigating, it seems like the power reading is just wrong. And I think that that is due to the fact that I have two power supplies on this unit. So I'm imagining that basically 2000 watts are being uh, distributed through the main power supply and then it's getting another supplemental 1300 watts uh, or so uh, from the attached power supply. Because out of the box, this thing is supposed to mine between, you know, 96, 100 terahash a second and consume about 3,400 watts. And, and it's doing just exactly that. Another thing you may have been wondering is how do we even get these accurate power readings in our garage so quickly and easily? Well, first thing we're using is the Altair mining PDU, right? This is a small, great form factor mining PDU, plugs into L630. Are right receptacles. This PDU has been great. Use our coupon code and our link down in the video description below, code Bosscoin. You get this thing for about a hundred bucks ship, and that's pretty sweet. Furthermore, how am I getting that reading on the wall? Well, that's a drop power meter, right, in a meter box case. I mean, come on, like data is king, and I need to know what's going on. And actually, getting double data, like in this scenario, one, you know, the meter box is easier to see and deal with. The Altair PDU is you know, premium bang for buck. Uh, but it's a really cool way for me to also double compare and make sure both of these things are reading right. And uh, in all my tests between different drop meters and, you know, in meter box cases and Altair PDUs, they have always lined up, uh, which is that's everything you can ask for with this. And yeah, we got a link with a uh, meter box as well. And we are the ones that got these sponsors on board with the giveaway. They're giving out free miners. So what are you waiting for? By the way, you better vote for Bosscoin too, because this isn't just a giveaway for miners, it's also a charitable event. And who doesn't want to support some Shiba Inus? Because that's the charity we chose. All right, so let's actually remote into the rig. Remote it into what's miners before, and they look like this. Bixbit didn't really like fully redesign uh, their dashboard, or I feel like they didn't do more than they needed to do, and that that's fine. Whereas like you look at Brains, and Brains just like totally revamped everything. You know, it's a full reskin. You know. Maybe some people like that, maybe some people don't. Either way, this is functional. So I'm getting an error here. I believe that that is just simply due to the multiple power supplies, the miner is still working properly. Uh, so, you know, that's that's fine in this regard. So let's check out what it's doing here. So it's moved my frequencies to 640, 614, 564 for a total average of 606 here. You can see my hash rates across the board. Uh, we can see the accepted shares, right? We have the performance here. So when we go to the minor configuration, you see the mining pool information here. Okay, simple, sure. You go to overclock, we have a liquid cooling tab. This is really cool. Uh, this is an immersion mode. So we can take the fans off and not use a fan spoofer and just throw these in liquid and utilize this liquid cooling mode. And then 
uh, it will function. If the miner does not detect the fans, it won't mine to keep itself safe. So you either need a fan spoofer, which tells it that there are fans here working and everything's fine, or you need it to be done on the firmware software side of this uh, and basically have the software say, hey, um, <laughs> fans are good, just keep doing what you're doing. At this point, we get full overclocking capabilities. We can ramp it up for frequency. We can put target voltage, minimum, maximum, board temp, power limits, power maxes, right? Uh, and all these things are especially helpful. And you may, if you've ever been a GPU miner, you may feel right at home looking at, you know, voltage, frequency, right? Putting in a power limit. This is very akin to GPU style uh, you know, overclocking. And you can, of course, do underclocking here as well. And uh, you can set up different profiles. Uh, you can generate profiles. And you can just go ahead and utilize those. You can also use a hotel fee, basically siphon a fee out or split your hash rate. In addition to that, there's the PSU control option, right? You can upgrade the PSU firmware, enable or disable the power fan. All this is useful uh, with immersion mining. Uh, and there's a couple notes here, right? Basically, this is for immersion mining configuration. Other than that, there's really not much else to this. So the great benefit of this firmware is going to be full overclocking capabilities, as well as ease of use for immersion deployment and what I don't think it does a good enough job showing you is that it has what it calls automation. Automatic update and tuning provided by the ASIC custom firmware. Basically, they're saying this firmware is automatically updating and tuning the device and basically helping maximize your returns on your mining rig. Some of their competitors do that by saying like, hey, the miner's tuning. Uh, it tells you it's doing this. It doesn't really showcase that it's doing this. And I think that that's a shame because it is taking place reportedly. So let me show you how to run through the Bixbit AMS automated monitoring system. This is so easy. You can get this set up in like just a few seconds. Honestly, it's pretty cool. I'm kind of impressed with this aspect of uh, the Bixbit firmware. Adding a device is super simple to this. You install the firmware, you click add minor, you click uh, what's relevant here, probably just firmware installed. And then it gives you a key on the next page and you will paste that into your minor. So you log into the reminder, you'll click on AMS, you'll punch the key in here, and that's it. And instantly, it pops right up. We get the miner, we get what it's doing, the performance, the temps, the address, air cooled, immersion, fan speed, power consumption, you know, simple, right? And we get a cumulative dashboard here as well. So when we actually go over to the mining pool and we go back and we see this thing fire up, Right, uh, the performance has been very good. Uh, it's been very stable. And you may notice that the 24 hour hash rate is lower than you know the current hash rate or even the reported hash rate. And that's because this does not have a full 24 hours mining on here yet. Uh, but I've used the Bixbit firmware before on AMP miners and I have used it before on What's miners as well. So let's talk about troubleshooting a little bit, right? Uh, so they have a really good troubleshooting guide. This is good information. And uh, I know Zeus Mining has a troubleshooting guide as well. Uh, but I found more details on this Bixpit guide uh, in comparison. And uh, if you if you contact them, they will like they have customer support, right? They want you running their firmware. They want your mining rigs online. So they will help you, uh, you know, troubleshoot if you're using their firmware. And they may even be nice and help you otherwise. Basically, if you're getting any kind of error codes, uh, you know, I've had numerous uh, 540s on my what's miners basically due to issues with the distribution bus the electric silver bus bar on these things even from the factory You know, anyway, this is a useful tool and if you have some what's miners This is worth bookmarking if people even do that or use that term anymore And uh, you know, I, this is something I keep handy and it's been helpful for me and I'll drop it down in the video description below uh, hopefully save you some time. You can just refer back to this video. You know, it's kind of all inclusive uh, resource there. All right, so this is the Bixbit firmware tutorial. I wanted to just go ahead and shoot this video, walk anyone through uh, this process if they're new to this, uh, and you know, show you how to participate. Uh, I'm still gathering data. I've had a good experience historically with this miner, especially in the pursuit of overclocking. I don't have enough data to be like, yeah, you know, definitely go for this over other things or stock firmware and things like that. Uh, the immersion capabilities, you know, that does interest me. 
uh, you know, the automated minor monitoring system, you know, that, that interests me as well, but only to a degree. I, I more like just like what that is as opposed to me personally. I mainly mine with S19 uh, Bitcoin miners. I only have a couple watts miner, so I don't have a fleet of them or seeing a whole, you know, lit up dashboard. Uh, I don't like saying it like that. That reminds me of car stuff and I never want to see a lit up dashboard. All right. Uh, but anyway, the, the point is, is this is more informational tutorial. And uh, I'm gonna keep testing this out, and uh, you know, and maybe over the next couple months, I'll be able to accumulate a lot of data, and that's with air cooled as well as immersion cooling. And uh, at that point, maybe I can come out with like a big bit firmware review, and like we really look at, you know, is this actually worth 2.8%? But until then, I'm in my endless pursuit of knowledge because knowledge is power. I love that quote. And who wants to be weak? Uh, so if you don't subscribe to Voscoin, then you won't have any knowledge, uh, then you'll be weak and never be powerful. Uh, just like our CPO, our chief powerful officer at the Voscoin YouTube channel. That's going to be Tails freaking Vosk. You better subscribe or run 10 seconds to Tails in every video. And on that note, I'm going to head out. Thanks for watching. See you later.